When last we met, the Da Vinci Color was fully reassembled and realizing its first full color 3D print. However, the model that I wanted to be able to 3D print was just coming out as a mess of black ink all over it. Would I ever be able to make this model work? Let's find out. Pretty cool, huh? We'll get to this in just a little bit. But first, at this point, I'm still trying to figure out why this model won't print in any sort of good color. It's possible that it's just a bad scan. I mean, I made it with an old Kinect 360 scanner. You can't even buy these things anymore. And it also wasn't made under the best of lighting conditions. There's a lot of information in the scan about shadows and things like that that really you don't want in a scan. You want the shadows of a model to come from the environment that it's in, not from the data that it's putting out there. Still, it just seemed like every time that the printer was going to put down black ink, it put down just way too much black ink and it was all over the place. I needed to have some other points of data to analyze this. Fortunately, before I got my Da Vinci Color, I knew that I was going to have to start producing color 3D models, and so I looked into ways of doing that, and Tinkercad makes it fairly easy. I'll go into more detail about this in a future video, but I started making a set of robot pawns, and just for fun, I made them in color, which opened up to me the possibility of the Robo Kitty Tron robot. It's kind of a cross between Voltron and Hello Kitty. However, when you print it out on an FDM or FFF 3D printer, the effect is somewhat lost. It's it's adorable, it's cute and everything, but it doesn't really look like that Voltron-y effect that I was looking for. So I took this model and I threw it at the Da Vinci Color and the result was pretty good. Now I noticed a couple things looking at this model. First of all, the pink on the nose was, um, mostly lost. In fact, all of the colors just kind of seemed washed out. There wasn't a whole lot. It's, it's like I printed it in draft mode on a 2D printer, except in 3D. Also, I noticed that, like I said, these were designed to print upside down with the overhangs designed to work that way, so it doesn't require any supports. And here on the, on the blue arm, where it printed it, it kind of oversprayed a little bit and sprayed blue onto the white of the head there. And I noticed that in other places as well, the, the red underneath the heart and the red underneath the wings all just kind of got oversprayed around it. So, all right, it's not perfect, but overall this was promising and it prompted me to print out a couple more of them. Here's the Victor inspired robot that I made. I also printed out a Simon. Now the Simon, there are a couple of things on here. First of all, I'm still kind of disappointed with the color. His face is supposed to be like an old uh, Macintosh or, or, or Apple computer screen. It's supposed to be mostly green with kind of a light green uh, text on it. But the light green was completely, it just looked like everything else on there. However, I did put some details on the back of Simon. Uh, little fan vents and, and expansion slots because his body is a computer. And I was impressed these came out and it looks really, really good, except for the fact that the color just isn't strong enough. Still, this led me in a direction and I thought, okay, if I can take, when, when you export an OBJ, the color data is saved in a separate file if, if you're using a texture anyways. That texture uh, can then be, it's a PNG file. You can open it in anything. So I got really clever and I opened it in Photoshop and I changed it from RGB to CYMK and I started to play with the curves. I took the black curve and I dropped it down as much as I could. So only the blackest of black areas would get any amount of black ink. And then I took the rest of the colors, looking at the way that the colors came out on my robot prints all washed out and increased the contrast in them so that the lower colors would get more ink when they did and the upper colors wouldn't get as much. The result is that the whole thing is, is less colorful, but hopefully the result on the print would be positive. And in fact, it was. It was super 
promising. There's still a little bit of area where it's a little bit too black with just more ink than it should have. And I did print this one a little bit bigger than the other one, but overall the color is impressive. I will also say that while this looks good on camera, in real life you can kind of tell that her skin went kind of jaundiced. And if I had to take my models and uh, I'd make this adjustment to them all the time, that wouldn't be too bad. However, I was looking at the color on this one and the color on this one, and particularly on the base. I put my logo in the base and had the, the uh, black with, with a green logo on it, and it didn't quite work out. The black washed it all out. But even then, all the colors were much stronger than in this print. Now, I do realize, though, that I made a change in how I printed this one. I printed this one at 0.1 millimeter layer height because of all the small details in it. But what if for every layer it's putting down the same amount of color? So if you cut the layers in half, you will essentially get twice as much color in the same amount of space. So I ran an experiment and I took this same exact model and ran it through the printer again, but this time at 0.1 millimeter layer height and look at the difference in the color it did indeed get twice as strong twice as robust twice as pretty so there we go i just learned something draft mode is more than just layer height it's also color depth i said this looked like i was printing it in draft mode well i did i printed it at 0.2 millimeter layer heights you need to print at 0.1 to get the full effect of the color now, my printer was starting to get some serious problems with the ink, and, and the ink head was very clearly clogged up. So I've been contacting uh, XYZ Printing throughout this entire process, and they taught me how to clean off my inkjet heads. And I got to thinking, this is interesting. Now that we've added inkjet heads onto the 3D printer, that's one more part that I'm going to have to maintain in order to get good prints, which isn't that big of a deal. I tried another print, I played with the curves a little bit more, I scaled it down in size and I put a white background with the green text and now the logo is actually visible on here, so that's a little bit promising. But when I scaled it back down, it got, again, really kind of black, just all sorts of black ink on it. Now, I gave my information to XYZ Printing, and other users in the beta team also gave their information to XYZ Printing. There was one guy on the forums who had printed out a zombie model, but it had white eyes. But when he printed it, all of a sudden there were black irises in there. And, and analyzing the model, where the, the vertex data got dense, in other words, where there were more polygons, which for some reason he had more polygons on the eye, uh, the software responded by kind of freaking out and just coloring it all black. Now, this model has a lot of very small polygon data in a very small space, so is it possible that that was the problem? XYZ Printing released a new version of their XYZ Maker, their, their own personal slicer software, and I tried it out. I took the color data back to the original color data for this model, uncorrected, unchanged, and threw it at the printer from the new version of XYZ Maker, and the result was amazing. Here's the best that I could do with the color correction, and here's the one that just comes out without any color correction. It's beautiful, her hair is yellow, her skin is skin tone. The, there was a little pattern on her cape, and you could even kind of see it in this one. It's amazing, the black on the base is still washing out the logo almost completely. Eh, now it's a little bit better, you can kind of see it. And also I cleaned the heads of the printer. But this is it! This is the model that I wanted to make and the effort that I wanted to put into it. XYZ Printing turned a corner with this new release of their slicer software and finally I can make the models that I want. I can take this scanner, scan people in, and print out board game pieces with them in it. How cool is this? Now, before I go on, there are a couple of elephants in the room concerning this 3D printer that I want to address. First of all, perhaps the biggest one to me is the fact that this printer isn't open, like at all. 
the the back of this printer that I had to open up, I had to use special screws to get at in order to get at the, the components of this printer. Their message is very clear. This is not for you to play with. Also, their software isn't open. You have to log into, you have to get a login for their software to use their slicer. That means that if their company ever goes out of business, does that mean that we lose the ability to slice things for these printers? Never mind the fact that if they go out of business, you're never going to be able to get materials or ink for them because they control that as well. Now, from the perspective of those of us who are accustomed to an open community and an open plans, that seems less desirable. And I'm with you on that one. However, from a business perspective, while openness is great for the consumers, it's not so great from a business perspective. And these guys have engineers that have families that need to get paid and fed. So they, they have to do this, at least for now. And so I'm not entirely opposed to it. I don't entire, I'm not entirely happy with it, but it's just what we're going to have to do. It's, it's the right choice for the business. However, the second problem that you might think about is the price of this. This is not a cheap 3D printer. This is a $3,000 3D printer. And for those of us who are used to buying cheap printers from China for 200 or 400 or 500 or maybe $1,000, $3,000, that's a lot. Except the original Replicator 1 that you can now buy these for a couple hundred dollars, this was a $2,000 printer when it first came out. And even the Thingamatic was $1,500. The idea of having a couple thousand dollars for a 3D printer, especially where you're paying an engineering and research and development team to make it, isn't actually that unreasonable. It's, it's not too bad, but it might put this printer outside of the range of the hobbyist. Perhaps it's still right for a prosumer though. If you have a business idea where having full color 3D printing might be desirable, this printer can do it, and it might be the right answer to that problem for you. So I think that it has a market. I just don't think that its market is everybody like the uh, like a cheaper 3D printer is. And the thing to keep in mind is that those cheaper 3D printers that you're getting, they're four and five and six year old technology that they use other people's engineering department and, and don't pay them, of course. They don't recompense them because it's an open source model they essentially stand on the shoulders of giants and if you call them out on that they'll just tell you that they're really really tall this printer does however have a lot of great features on it i've already mentioned the auto build plate leveling but i cannot talk, praise that enough it's not auto level correction it doesn't sense the bed and then tilt your print to adjust it no this is full auto bed leveling. It senses where the bed should be and then uses a motor to turn the screw for you and bring it up to that point. How cool is that? It's also got a removable build plate. That's cool. It also does full color 3D printing, so that's cool. It has a full color touch screen interface that is absolutely beautiful to use. And since I've gotten a chance to take a look at the processor on this thing, I can say this ain't no Arduino. This is a really powerful machine and it's also got sensors for everything it can sense when the door is shut it can sense when the top is down like i said auto build plate leveling although there are things that it can't effectively sense like when my bowden tube it comes undone and it just keeps sending the filament out <laughs> into nowhere i would have loved if it could have caught that before it happened twice also there's no heated build plate on this machine still it's it's a great machine and it does some amazing things and what it does it does really great now other people will complain and say that past xyz printer machines have suffered from bad electronics and bad components that have failed over time i can't talk for that right now i'm going to give this printer a run through and trust me i'm printing a lot on this printer because i just have so many great ideas for what to do when you can print in full color so we'll see over time if this machine will go the distance. I hope so. I hope that they've learned from their mistakes and that they're trying to make a better consumer machine. They made some they made some choices in the past that maybe didn't work out best for the consumer, and I hope that they've learned from that. But on that, time will tell. Still, this is a super impressive machine, and what it can do pleases me so much. Well, 
I've got a LARP, local LARPing group that I need to go 3D scan and make some board game pieces for, so I'm going to leave it at that and say I want to thank you very much for watching. I also have to thank my Patreon backers, and hey, there's still room up here for more. And as always, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.